It turns out that these simple experiments allow us to explain the hydrophobic effect on the molecular scale. I'm going to do that with an illustration of cooking. Uh, if you're boiling some pasta, you're going to possibly add some oil to the water. And these small oil droplets will somehow have to interact with the water. I'll throw in a second drop of oil. I'm generous today. What's going to happen around each of these drops of oil is that the waters can form hydrogen bond. The waters that used to form hydrogen bonds with other waters will have to reorient because they can't form hydrogen bonds against that oil. So instead they will have to orient in some complicated fashion. Again, I'm drawing this very quickly and schematically. So that each of these waters will somehow have to form a network structure to maintain their hydrogen bonds, at least the first approximation. The net effect of that is that the number of hydrogen bonds is going to be constant. But that is not a free lunch, uh, even if it's pasta. Sorry, pun intended. Uh, what happens is that we're paying for these hydrogen bonds in terms of entropy. Because we've now formed a very well-ordered layer around each hydrophobic sol solute. And these layers are sometimes called clathrates. Uh, we, it's even possible to observe them experimentally, although it's not entirely easy because it's not a crystal. They're not, they are still mobile and everything, but they formed a very regular structure to maintain those hydrogen bonds. Now, imagine if I took those two drops of oil and at some point in time they would merge to form a slightly larger drop of oil. This droplet does not have to be enormously larger because the volume of oil we can solvate inside a droplet corresponds to the radius cubed, right? But on the other hand, so sorry, so merging two droplets would correspond to a radius that is two to the power of one third larger. But the increase in the area is just going to be the square root of two larger because the area is proportional to the square of the radius. So there will still be a clathrate structure network around this drop of oil. But this one will involve fewer waters. And then there are now going to be a handful of waters that are happy that can form hydrogen bonds out in bulk water, that is the pure solvent. Now, if there is an exchange between these, which there will be, what's going to happen is that this process is going to be very advantageous because I will gain entropy going in this way. There won't be any change in energy. While if I go in that direction, I'm going to be paying in terms of entropy. So this will lead to the effect that it's much more advantageous to separate phases. In this case, that's why you get large drops of oil that might be a centimeter large in water rather than dispersing them all around in the water. And that is exactly the hydrophobic effect. The, there are two cool things here. The first thing is that Although the hydrogen bond is electrostatic in nature, there's no question about that. The hydrophobic effect ends up being entropic in nature because we never, the hydrogen bonds are so strong that we never break them. We just reorient them and that's why it shows up in the entropy. What would you do if you try to solve something in water and it just precipitates? You might try to raise the temperature, right? That would make a lot of sense if you're trying to solve it, say, sodium chloride. The solubility will go up with temperature. But what ha would happen here? Think a little bit about it. Hit pause. You're back. I hope you used our old friend, the equation e equals E minus Ts, or G equals H. But the temperature goes there, right? So if you increase the temperature, what's going to happen is that you will make this term more dominant. And that's where the entropy went. So what we are predicting here is that if the hydrophobic effect is entropic in nature, if you increase the temperature, not only will the solubility not go up, it's actually going to go down. And that's actually the case. Because that oil you threw in the water when boiling pasta, it does not dissolve when you hit 100 degrees centigrade, right? If anything, the effect is slightly worse, although you probably haven't been able to observe that. But the hydrophobic effect becomes worse when the temperature goes up, not better. So it's quite different from normal solubility of salts.